guys, welcome to Gearheads. Now, you guys probably know me, and I'm Jesse, and this is my wife, actually, Senna. So, Hi. And if you have not watched Gearheads before, obviously it's usually me and my, my friends, but today I am here real fast because we have this 1997 Jeep Cherokee, which is uh, our car, and she bought from her mom. Uh, about a year ago, and uh, we're gonna be doing some restoration stuff on it and whatnot And there'll probably be a lot more projects later, but for right now we're getting started uh, With doing some power steering lines because this thing once you drive once you drive it around town It's not a big deal. It just slowly leaks it hardly even drips on the ground But if you go for a long trip that fluid and the oil in there gets real hot and it starts squirting out of the high-pressure uh, power steering line straight onto the exhaust, which is an awesome way to start the Jeep on fire and burn it to the ground, which we do not want because it's her baby. No. So. <laughs> so anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Oh. Is it? Just lift. I know. I know how to do it. Okay, I wasn't sure. Jeez. I'm not go to the other one. I can't reach. <laughs> there you go, now you got it. All right, so the power steering lines are on the driver's side of the engine. Come on over here and I'll show you. So on the driver's side of the engine here, you'll see the power steering pump right here, and then this is the high pressure line that goes down this side, and it goes down lower to the uh, rack. Now, or actually on this thing, it's a steering box. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the air box off first so that I can reach down and get to those. We're gonna be replacing the uh, the high pressure line and we're going to re be replacing the return line that comes up from the bottom so let's take the air box off first get it out of the way and first you want to take these clips out and then you're going to want to whoop, remove this guy there we go uh, should allow me to pull that there we go that guy off this one there we go and just put that up out of the way Mm -hmm. Pull nice the filter job. Out. Oh, Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> your filter looks kind of dirty, but it's not that bad. All right, now you're going to want to get a half inch socket and take the three bolts holding in the box. Before we take the lines out, in the interest of not making a big mess and spilling power steering fluid all over the floor, I'm going to go ahead and empty the reservoir here and I'm just going to use a big turkey baster and hopefully that fits in there enough to get all the fluid out. Look at that. There we go. Perfect. You're so cute. Oh my gosh. Matt doesn't talk to me like this. He's not married to you. Oh, okay. You better cool it down. People on the camera are gonna think you actually like me. <laughs> they haven't met me yet. At home, she doesn't. She yells at me. She abuses <laughs> me. To all you viewers, just want to say how many shirts Jesse sacrifices for the show. He has no clean shirts because <laughs> they're all stained and disgusting. She asked why I couldn't just wear the same shirt every episode. And I was like, well, that would look weird. I'd be wearing the same clothes every episode. Yeah. So. I don't know. I'm all. I get the shirt. This isn't new, though. Everybody. It's not like this just started with the show. It's always been this way. That is very true. I've always ruined my shirts quickly, this which is nasty. Bums me out sometimes because I liked this shirt. It bums you out? A little bit. <laughs> Not enough to stop working though. All right, cool. That's probably fine. So now we're going to start taking the power steering lines off, and this top one here is a 5 8. There we go. Just had to crack it loose. Alright, there's the top one. Now let me get the bottom one down there. Okay, so up top is an American size. Down here, it's an 18 millimeter. So it's an American size, or I mean a metric size. Let me bust that one loose. There we go. And then sometimes these are a pain because you have to, you can't put a ratchet on it. You just have to keep turning it a quarter turn at a time. But oh well. Oop, let me put the oil thing under the car. It's going out still. Uh -oh. There we go. Even though I tried to empty it, there's still some in the lines. There's nothing you can do about that. It's always going to be that way. All right, now that was actually the low pressure line that I just took off there, not the high pressure line. 
but you gotta take that one off first to get to it because it'll be in your way. So, um, let me go ahead and take the low pressure line off up here next, which is right here actually. You can see that little uh, clamp holding it on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the clamp down and pull the hose off. Any pliers will work for this. I'm just using these different shaped ones because they're convenient. All right. And these hose pliers, you can get these things at Harbor Freight, super cheap, and they make pulling off hoses so much easier because you can grab it and you can twist it so it breaks it loose. Although I might not be able to do that with this one. I have a new line to replace it with, so if you can't break it loose very easily, like I'm fighting with this one right now. Cut it. Then yeah, right? just cut it with a cut it with a razor blade. All right, I'm just going to cut it with a razor blade. <gasps> Come on, piece of crap. Look, that still doesn't want to come piece off. Piece of crap? I said crap. Oh. <laughs> That's a you're piece so, of crap. You're so mean to me. He's so abused. There we go. Nice. Boop. It was just sticking to it. All right, and it looks like that was wrapping under the coolant so hose that was there. So the was leaking? Uh, no, this one, I, I don't oh, know. It might oh, have careful, been leaking. Careful. Oh, I'll have to clean that up with a rag. I don't think that that was the hose that was leaking. I think it was actually, it's just Still this one. Still leaking from there. But eh, it's fine. That's what's going to happen. That's why I put the oil drain under the car. Oh, I see. All right. Now let's go ahead and pull the high pressure line out. So let's see what size that is. Is it the same size as the other one was or not? I don't know. Can you see it? I know. I know. I'm kind of. Big hand is in the way. There we go. All right. It is also an, see. It's an 18 millimeter just like the other one was. Oh, there we go. Here, can you move your hand out so we can see? Point to it first. All right, it's that guy right down here, and it's also an 18 millimeter. Oh, yeah, so one sec. I gotta reach my hand down in front of the light to get to it though. Mm -hmm. But that should show you how to get to it. Man, this one's like the king of a quarter turn at a time. I can, I can only. I can only get like a little bit. Come on, work harder. Uh huh. Get in there. So says you. I could do this with my eyes closed. Come on. Let me get the rest of my fingers, please. Please. You can do it. There we are. Nice. There we go. Woohoo. Let's see it again. Do you see how much stuff was sticking to that hose? It's been leaking for a while and just caking things on. Nasty. All right, at least while I have the uh, lines out of the way, it's been leaking down here. I'm, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time cleaning everything up, but I may as well at least wipe clean where I leaked so it doesn't stay too greasy in here. There we go, that's good enough for now. Let me get the new lines. All right, so I got the new lines here. I ordered these from Rock Auto because they were very affordable from there. I think I got the high pressure line for what? I think it was like only 10 bucks and I got this one for, I think it's, I don't remember. Either way, all together, both of these lines was only 20 or $30. If you go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone, they're gonna wanna charge you 50 or 60 bucks for these lines. So I'd say going to Rock Auto would be a good idea to find these. And uh, they're both by Gates also, which is a good quality brand. So I know I'm not just getting something cheap that's gonna start leaking again after the rubber dries out in two years. So let me just take them out of the packaging and I'll start putting them in. Before you put the new power steering lines in your car, it also comes with these new little O-rings right here. So I got this little green one and it actually goes on. And just so you know, you gotta do, there's one for the uh, return line as well. But I already showed you how on these two. So let's go ahead and route this in where it's gonna go. This one, the, uh, this one with this U bend in it here is the one that goes up top and the other one goes down below. So I just gotta wrap it under the coolant line here. And for now, I don't care where the rest of the line goes, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this one set down straight, and then you just gotta reach your hand down and get this uh, nut started. Okay, and before you tighten this down with a wrench, you're gonna want to come up here and just make sure that it doesn't need to turn. You want it to be loose enough so it can still rotate, and uh, get this one set up into place too. On the top. 
Yeah, because like I said, because if you tighten that down and then you go to pull this up, it might be warp pulling the line a weird direction if uh, if it's not facing the right direction. So, all right, I'm not going to tighten the top one in yet either. I want it to be loose enough so I can pull it out of the way for the return line because it was easier to get to the clamp. But for now, let's see if that used an 18 like the stock one did. Yep. Cool. All right, that one's snug. I'd say that's tight enough. Let's go ahead and get the return line in there on the bottom now. The uh, new one did not come with a new clamp, so it might be a good idea to go to the hardware store and get a new one if you would like. But I'm gonna go ahead and just slide the old clamp back on, and it should be fine. Like I said, it's just a return line. It's kind of low pressure, so. Let's go ahead and slip the return hose down here. Now the only thing you might fight a little bit is not remembering exactly how it mounted. So, it goes down, I'll pull the coolant hose up to show you its orientation in a second, but that's it right there, so hold on. You get it, you have to set it down in there first into the hole, and then the uh, the elbow of it goes over this, uh, the other one that you just took put back in, and then it goes around the side here, underneath the coolant hose and right next to the uh, steering shaft there. But once you get it screwed in, it won't be touching anything, so let me just get it started. Make sure you get it straight and don't cross thread it. Then you'd be in for a bad day. See. Oh, of course. This one's a different size. <laughs> what are you doing to me, Gates? Is this a three quarter? Yep, all right, on the uh, aftermarket one here, it's a three quarter to put it back together. Now I have many turns ahead of me. I live my life a quarter turn at a time. Wow. Just like Dominic Toretto. Oh my gosh. Fast and Furious fan here. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. Jesse cried at the end of that movie. Didn't you? Maybe. Guilty? <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. It had him driving off into the sunset and everything. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. I'm just gonna double check the other one and make sure it's still tight because I did turn it a little bit and it might have loosened it up a little. You having fun pushing the mic into my head? <laughs> Sorry. It's all soft and fuzzy too. It feels like you're like Did rubbing you a cat. Did you tell them about your camera? I don't know. We're celebrating. This is the first time I'm actually using my brand new camera. Yeah, it's got this fluffy mic Don't mind thing. the big project going on in the background that's not done yet. I think Matt and I are gonna get back working Should on I it tomorrow night. Should I pan over there or no? No. Okay, we'll keep it secret. <laughs> they, it shouldn't be a secret keep. if they've been watching You'll what's be been going on. Stay tuned. Anyway, we're celebrating Jesse's oh. high quality camera here. Yay. He dragged me out here as a slave to film this for him. Just slave. kidding. Just kidding. She You're wanted this fixed Jeep. tonight. That's what she wanted. Yep. I thought you said it was our Jeep. You just called it my Jeep. Oh, um. Mm. <laughs> All right. Now, actually, I don't need to mess with the clamp yet. First, just go ahead and get the low uh, pressure line shoved back up there and get your clamp and slide it up. Like I said, it's kind of optional. If you want to, you can get a new line or a new clamp, but I think this one will be just fine. I'm just pulling it to where it's more accessible in the future. Thank you. Uh-huh. For yourself. Next time you work on the Jeep. Uh-huh. There we go. All right, now we just gotta get the top line here screwed in all the way, and I'm out of here. That's You're it. out of here? Yeah, I'm leaving you. Wow. <laughs> okay, mm. well, now I'll fill it up with some power steering fluid and start the engine up and make sure I didn't mess up and it doesn't leak, but I think that's it. All right, here's the power steering fluid. If you turn the bottle on its side like this, it comes out much smoother and more consistent than if you try and pour straight over. Mm -hmm. Or on the mm. side. Yeah, well that's what the rag's for, right? Yeah. yeah, you just spilled. The little bit that I spilled. Come on. A be, little bit. Be forgiving, it was just a little bit. Lies. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start the Jeep up, and uh, I wanna make sure that it, it runs the fluid through all the lines. You're gonna wanna turn the wheel back and forth a bit to work out any bubbles that might be in the system now, mm -hmm. uh, and then double check that and top it off if you need to.
go. All right. Ooh. Let's start it up. I'm going to leave that open so I can watch for bubbles and keep an eye on the level. Look at how foamy it is in there. Show them. That's all bubbles. There's a lot of bubbles there, but there might be air in the line still. You can hear that too. You hear that noise? Work any bubbles out, and then after that, go back and check the level. I'm just gonna add a little bit of fluid, and I think that's good. So that is how you replace the power steering lines on a 97 Jeep Cherokee. I think it's the same for the mid 80s, probably the mid 2000s ones. I'm not gonna say exact years because I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, I know they use this engine for a long time. So if you needed help figuring out how to do that, I hope it helped you out. And if you just watched because you enjoy watching us, I hope you enjoyed it. Now, uh, if you haven't watched our channel before, please hit that subscribe button. We're gonna have more videos on this Jeep coming eventually. Um, it's got like 240, 250,000 miles on it. So there's definitely gonna be a lot of maintenance and repairs. And hopefully we're gonna be doing some modifications to it as well. So we can go off-roading and have some more fun with it. Uh, we also, of course, are known for doing the Miatas and whatnot, and we have not yet shown, but she got a newer car. It's been a little while now, but you guys still haven't seen it, so she got okay, something so more to fun see to that drive. Soon. Yeah, she got something fun to drive. Yes. We're not going to tell you yet, though. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you had fun watching the video, and don't forget, keep, keep wrenching! wrenching.